We're under the lights tonight in Cicero, New York for Section 3 Boys Lacrosse as the Cicero North Syracuse North Stars look to open their season with a victory over the 1-0 East Syracuse Manoa Spartans. Hello, everybody. I'm Julian Barron alongside Jacob Kronberg. Glad to bring you this game here on CMY Stream. Really glad to have you along board for what should be a pretty fun matchup between two very talented teams, East Syracuse Manoa, coming off a big victory on Wednesday, 19-9 over Central Square. And they'll go, they're going to try and carry that momentum into tonight's game against CNS as they hit the road and arrive here in Cicero for a matchup with the North Stars. Great to be with you, Jacob. Happy to be here. So we got a lot going on tonight. We're going to see the CNS team for the first time this season. This is their opener, and they're doing it at home, which always helps. How do you think being at home factors in to CNS's confidence tonight? I think it's huge to start the season at home if you're the North Stars, especially when you have the facilities that they have. Great stadium, great atmosphere, and I think that's going to play a big role going up against a powerhouse in East Syracuse, Manoa. There's no doubt about it, and we know that ESM defeated Central Square 19-9 on Wednesday. You come into a game 1-0, you're feeling good. What's important for ESM to keep at the front of their minds tonight after coming off a victory? Do you say, oh, we won? Are we a little bit more powerful now? Or do you say to yourselves, that doesn't mean anything, that's the past? I don't see the Spartans taking their foot off the gas at all, but I think their game plan's got to be pretty simple. And it's make sure Lance Madonna has the ball and gets a touch every time you're on the offensive attack. He's just that good. He's committed to Richmond. He's the leading scorer on the team. He had nine points in the win against Central Square, four goals and five assists. So as long as you feed guys like him or even Gata, Gavin Hoodling, it's also going to play a big role in the offensive. And I think if you can keep the ball with those two guys, you're going to be in great shape. That's right. Lance Madonna, the first team all-star in 2018, according to Syracuse.com. We'll see him and the rest of the ESM Spartans alongside the CNS North Stars in just a moment right here on CNY Stream. Stay with us. And welcome back, everybody, to Cicero. We got a great matchup for you tonight between ESM and CNS. A beautiful night for some lacrosse. And I can tell you what, Jacob, it's been a cold winter, but it's nice to finally have some semi-warm air in Central Yeah, New York. it's beautiful weather for any spring sport, but especially lacrosse. We are going to be under the lights tonight, so it might get a little chilly down the stretch. 
but it's nice to be able to see the guys out there without having a hoodie on over the jersey. That's right. Did you bring a jacket tonight? Maybe. Uh, we'll see if we can find one for you. If it gets a little bit too cold up here in the booth, we'll send it back down to the field where we're about to get started here at CNS. And one very important thing to talk about, of course, would be the fact that East Syracuse, in terms of talent, they certainly have lost a little bit of talent, you could say, going into this year versus last year. Uh, Derek Madonna, who played for ESM last season, he was a four-team All-State player, and now he plays at Hobart, just down the road, just down I-90, from Cicero and Syracuse and Central New York. In fact, you could even consider Hobart to be in Central New York. So he stayed local, he's very talented, but you're gonna see a lot of Lance Madonna, his brother tonight, a very talented family, no doubt. Yeah, well, uh, Derek Madonna on nationally ranked Hobart right now, yes. that lacrosse program doing very well, but Lance has just kind of filled in for his older brother after last year. He's been fantastic after just one game, four goals, five assists, as we said in the open. And he's the guy you have to look out for. He's the center point of this ESM offense, can shoot with the best of them from both the right side and the left side. And he's going he's going top net most of the time. So that's where uh, the goalkeepers on Cicero North Syracuse, they have two guys who go out there. They're going to have to look out. Yeah, we want to thank you so much for joining us here on CMY Stream. We want to also remind you that we are trying to have an on-screen clock tonight, but uh, the quality of our camera is a little bit subpar. So we're going to have that fixed before our broadcast on Monday. But for tonight, let's just make do with what we have, and we'll try and give you frequent score or rather time updates as much as we can throughout the course of the game as they introduce the CNS North Stars and the ESM Spartans on the left side of the field getting ready to take the field. And CNS coming into this game, no doubt, Jacob, as an underdog, you could say. Yeah, very much so. This is a North Stars team that was 6-10 and ten last year, lower middle-of-the-pack team here in Section 3. And then on the other side, you have ESM, who was in the state tournament just a year ago. They lost to Victor in the quarterfinal round, and they're going to come out firing. They're a high-powered offensive team. So if you're the North Stars, you really have to try and match them offensively. I don't see a way in which you can stop the powerful offense led by Lance Madonna and Gavin Hoodling. Even Luke Rosacci had three assists in the first game. So I think you have to try and match them if you're CNS. And so the two teams meet at center field and get set for the start of action tonight here at CNS. Once again, I want to remind you that we really do appreciate your viewership tonight in the first game of the CNY Stream Lacrosse Showcase Series. We'll be back on Monday for JD versus ESM. That'll be in East Syracuse. Be sure to join us at 6.30 Monday night for that game at cnystream.com. But before that, we're getting set for this game here tonight in Cicero as the goalies take their spots inside the creases. The faceoff going to be a very important aspect for CNS tonight. If they can continue to win the faceoff, they've got Joel Firth at the Fogo right now and keep getting more and more offensive possessions is really on the only way they can stay on pace offensively with the Spartans. It's Joel Firth for CNS versus Dylan May of ESM for the faceoff. And they go at it. We're underway here at Cicero. A fight for the ball at midfield. And somebody will come away with clear possession. It'll likely be CNS as they chase after the ground ball. It's Aiden Longley taking it the other way. And CNS will set up their offense for the first time tonight. Working it outside the perimeter here. They send it back behind the net, and the ball's lost. Heads back towards the end line, and it goes out of bounds. It'll be ESM ball. The closest man there was wearing orange and blue. They'll send it quickly downfield, a loose ball, a chance for a ground ball. ESM goes over. It was number 24, Timothy Krause, trying to field it, now getting slashed at. CNS again fighting in a clear lane for CNS, or rather ESM to take a shot that goes well out of bounds off the mark. Nice save there by goalkeeper Joseph Bartol Bartolo. Those are three turnovers in the first three possessions of the game. That's not something you expect from two teams that are known to control the ball well, especially ESM. So it's Gavin Hoodling here on the near side trying to make something happen. Goes in looking for a shot, and he feeds his man in front of the goal, but it looks like we're going to get a crease violation. It'll go over to CNS. Yeah, Lance Madonna walked just behind goalkeeper Bartolo there, stepped inside the crease, and that's another turnover for the Spartans. Quickly taking it downfield is Riley Kennedy for CNS. He dumps it off to the far side. And once again, the North Stars will try and set up their offense on the left side of the field. It's Ethan Barrett. Barrett closely guarded. 
Now racing up towards the 30-yard line, he'll go back to the top of the perimeter. Coming into the game now is Joel Firth, and Firth will race towards the goal, not taking a chance at a shot. Now trying to spin around his defender, feeds towards the far side of the net, and a score. How about that for CNS? Quickly on the assist, and they're up 1-0 here. The North Stars get on top early. That's great ball movement by the North Stars. Ball was settled at X for a little bit, allowed a lot of off-ball movement from the attackmen and the midfielders, and then you see Firth just cut straight down Broadway, wide open for a shot on Cage, and he converted. And so now we'll go back to midfield. one nothing CNS here, 10-28 to go in the first quarter of play. ESM trying a different man at faceoff now. It looks like Eric Callahan going to get a shot. That's right. It'll be Callahan versus Joel Firth. And the possession arrow will go the way of ESM on the faceoff violation. And now they work it to the near side. It's Riley Rossignol. Passes across the goal. Looking for the shot on the sidearm. No good. CNS defends it, and they'll bring it the other way. Across the 40 and now across midfield. CNS quickly working it down with uh, with number 14, Joel Firth. Now back behind the goal and it goes past the end line. It'll be ESM ball. CNS just unable to capitalize on another cause turnover. Back on that last play, Bartolo was able to read the head of the stick coming from Timothy Krause. Started low, ended low, and got the save with his left foot. So now a chance for ESM to bring the ball up the field. Still stuck a little bit in the backfield here, and they'll work it down to Justin Smith. Smith loses the ball, and it'll go out of bounds. CNS gets it back, another turnover. We've seen a handful of turnovers from both sides early on. I don't know if that has something to do with the light out. It's kind of that in-between time of daytime and night, the lights on the field. But it seems like everyone's struggling to just throw and catch the ball. So CNS works it up with Connor Lynch. Lynch loses the ball. It's poked away by ESM, and they've got a chance to recover. Now a scrum for the ball, but somehow getting it back is Connor Lynch. So he picks up his own mishap. Lynch on the far side, and now we get a whistle. We it looks like we're going to get a turnover. ESM will get it back. We've yet to see either side put together a long, steady offensive possession. It's something you may look to see on this upcoming possession for the Spartans, maybe give the ball to Madonna, let him work from the X or from straight away. Yeah, long pass downfield there goes out of bounds, and that should be another turnover. CNS was closest to it. So the North Stars again with a chance, up one nothing here. Nine minutes left in the first quarter of play. And the North Stars will try and bring it across midfield with Nolan Firth, and Firth still working his way up across the 35-yard line. Firth with a head of steam looks to give it off, and he goes backwards instead. Bailout option. It's Joshua Pickard. Pickard keeping it on the far side. Now they'll work it around the horn here. Coming over to get it is Ethan Barrett. Barrett closely guarded. Backed into a corner, and he gets it off. Just playing a game of catch here. Now a drive coming in by Joshua Pickard. Pickard trying to feed inside. Still nobody open. They work it to X and now bringing it back in front of the goal once more. Look it up for a shot, fires it in there and a nice save made. How about that? Beautiful job by Logan Lemonbaum. Lynch wasn't able to get much heat on the back of that shot coming from his offhand on the left side. Easy save made by Lemonbaum. And ESM now with a chance on offense. Eric Callahan. And he feeds it to his left side, coming straight away at the goal, racing in and feeding it goes past the end line out of bounds. It should be CNS ball, and it is. Just no chance for Gavin Hoodling to bring that one in. The North Stars get it on a turnover. This is the most unlikely of starts for ESM, a team that scored 19 goals in their opener against Central Square. We're nearly five minutes into this game, and they've only got one shot on cage. So we'll see if they can get their offense going here. But for now, it's CNS trying to make something happen against this ESM defense. Feed near the goal shot, and that is deflected. A beautiful chance for Ethan Barrett, but the shot just goes a little bit errant, and it's deflected all the way back down towards the 40, where it's finally fielded again by CNS, but a hard push back at the corresponding 40. The North Stars hold on to it. 
And just like that, another chance for CNS to get a second goal on the board here. 6.59 left in the first quarter of play. Driving straight up the middle is Chase Kassler. And Kassler, a quick shot deflected. A nice block, you could call it, by Logan Lemelbaum. Now to the near side, fighting for the ball. And ESM picks it up, now loses it. Spartans trying to clear the ball. Justin Smith over to the far side they go. Not Neither team's riding very hard on these clears, and I guess when people are turning the ball over like that, you don't really have to. Another unforced error by this ESM defensive unit trying to clear the ball. So now it's Riley Kennedy for CNS, and the North Stars will have a chance to get their second goal of the day again. We do see a flag on the field. There may be a delayed penalty on ESM. Try to confirm that if we can. Joel Firth coming in hot. Looking for the wraparound shot, takes it, and that's deflected. Looked like off the leg, perhaps, of Logan Lemelbaum, and it goes back towards the end line. Somehow kept in bounds, a scrum for the ball between two Spartans and two North Stars. The ball still loose, and now the ball finally goes out of bounds. And we will have the penalty assessed. So it's going to be a one-minute penalty, just trying to confirm that it was indeed on ESM as it most obviously was because, of course, CNS had the ball and they continued their possession. That was a cross-check that was called on midfielder Luke Risacci coming across on Connor Lynch at the top of the cage there. The cross-check, but the North Stars were given the rest of that possession. Penalties aren't assessed until the ball changes possession. So it'll be a six on five here. CNS will try and capitalize on the man up opportunity. Up by one with 5.41 to go in the first quarter of play. A shot and a goal. CNS capitalizing on their man up chance. It's two to nothing, North Stars. I think that was Joel Firth once again, just cutting straight down the middle, and that's the second time they've made, been able to find him at point blank range in front of Cage. And for goalie, Logan Lemelbaum, there's nothing you can do to stop a point-blank shot from a guy who's got the a caliber of player that Fusco is. Yeah, and of course you have to consider the fact that CNS being up a man in that sort of situation is going to give them a clear advantage over a five-man ESM defense. 5.38 to go here in the first quarter of play, and we'll get another face-off at midfield. Two to nothing, North Stars is your score. Here we go. Wild fight for the ball. In there was Joel Firth to try and scoop it up for CNS, and it looked like for a moment he did have it. Whole lot of slashing going on, and there we're going to get the penalty, and they'll go ahead and assess it right away. Maybe a, maybe a couple penalties on the play there. Seems like uh, Rosacci, who was just called for the last tr cross check, taking out a little anger, a few late hits when Firth was lying on the ground at the end of that play. Yeah, not only that, but it, it looked like a number of penalties came out, perhaps personal fouls after the initial penalty. We'll get the official word from the referees. So we'll get two penalties on ESM. Four defensemen on the field for the Spartans as opposed to six attackmen for CNS. So it'll be a two-man up opportunity. When you go two men down on the defensive side, th there's really only one defensive strategy, strategy that can be implemented, and that's the four-man box. You'll see them set up right in front of Cage, and each of them kind of have their own zone they're going to be responsible for, but you got to think for CNS, if they were able to convert on a one-man up, this two-man up should be no problem. That's right. So six offensive players on the field for CNS, four for ESM. And I think they're just trying to sort out the confusion here to make sure that everybody's on the same page about the penalties here. It, it seems apparent that one way or another, CNS will have six men on the offensive zone, and then there will be four defenders for, uh, for ESM. 
from the looks of it, they sent uh, Versace off the field again, as well as Zachary Christian, Christian, the defenseman of the Spartans. Those two waiting inside the penalty box right now, but we're waiting for the officials to assess everything. Oh, well, we're getting another flag here, perhaps a, a personal foul against CNS. Maybe something was said. I believe it's going to be a stick violation, a legal stick on Joel Firth. That's what ha was happening. The officials were seeing how deep the pocket was on the Fogo's stick. How about that? Something that's definitely avoidable, and Joel Firth comes out of the game, goes to the quote-unquote penalty box. Standing there in the near side, Firth will take a moment to sit out. So you would think, just from deduction, it would be a five-on-four chance on offense for CNS. But I think they're going to switch possession here. They do. The illegal stick in the faceoff X results in a change of possession, even though ESM was called for two penalties there. So they'll be a man down, but still be on the offensive attack. you got to expect them to just kind of move the ball around the box, kill time until their guys can come back in on the offensive end. Yeah, it took them a while to get all that sorted out. You'd think maybe if this were baseball, Rob Manford would be pretty upset about taking all that time out of the game, wouldn't you think? Yeah, just maybe a little bit. The clock stopped. There's still five minutes to go in this first quarter. And we'll see if ESM can put something together offensively. Yeah, ESM down too early here. 5.16 to go in the first quarter of play. And we'll see what they can pull off. Gavin Hoodling on the near side, double teamed, gets away from two defenders, coming in for the shot, looking to take it, winds up, and he scores. Gavin Hoodling asserting his dominance on the CNS defense, double covered, runs out of it, steps up for a shot. He takes it beautifully done by Gavin Hoodling. Outstanding play there by Hoodling. He was double teamed just on the near side, 10 yard line and just split the defense with a little underneath swim move and that sweet left-handed shot. Not a lot of times you see guys have the confidence to let one rip when they're man down on the offensive side. But when you have the talent Gavin Hoodling does, I guess you're, you got the green light from your coach. Yeah, Hoodling able to pull both of those defenders back with him to the near side and then runs directly through them, comes up for the shot, uncontested a really beautiful job by Gavin Hoodling to get away from that North Star defense. And all of a sudden, it's 2-1 to one CNS. So we get another face off here. Fighting for it for ESM is Eric Callahan at midfield, and Callahan's still trying to pick it up. He does for the Spartans. ESM trying to get a quick goal in to try and tie the game under five to go here in the first quarter. 4.45 left, and now we get a stoppage. Excuse me, no, we don't get a stoppage. Running in, trying for the goal, and he fits it in beautifully. How about that? Gavin hoodling again. The sophomore absolutely showing out on these last two possessions. Broke by the entire North Stars defense and was from point blank range, and you knew he wasn't missing that one. Gavin hoodling putting on a show here so far for ESM. He's got two goals. Both of those goals are really all that ESM has to show for the day so far. It's 2-2. Two to two. All knotted up here in Cicero for 35 to go in the first quarter those were his fifth and sixth goals already on the season and we're just one quarter into game number two this sophomore's well on his way to a bright career for the Spartans so Callahan will again fight at midfield for the faceoff on behalf of the Spartans and it's pushed the way of Callahan he will pick up the ground ball momentarily and bobbles it for a moment it'll take it the other way for ESM all three penalties are released now. It's even strength on the field. So the Spartans will work it around, try and set up their offense. And they'll try and get into the offensive zone. It goes right by Gavin Hoodling. Hoodling on the far side. Guarded closely, brings it up towards that 15-yard line here at Cicero North Syracuse High School. Back to the top they go. And now to the near side for Jackson Palum. ESM taking their time to set up their offense. Luke Rosacci coming in hot. Rosacci turning back to try and give it off. And now a chance for Palum. Palum back to Rosacci. Rosacci winds up for a moment. Now steps back. Rosacci trying to turn that corner. He cannot. Spins the other way. He's guarded so closely. Now to the near side. It's Hoodling. Hoodling. Back towards the end line. And 
Hoodling gets it right back. Now it acts Hoodling trying to turn around and put a move on. He can't. Slips and falls down twice. Hoodling looking for the wraparound, and now we get a whistle. And it'll be a turnover. Use of the offhand to push off by Hoodling. See, he had a lot of trouble getting his balance there. Might be something to do with the turf they're not used to here. So CNS will clear the ball quickly, bring it the other way, and the North Stars try to set up their offense, giving up two consecutive goals to ESM. Trying to answer back. On the far side, looking for the wraparound from X. Cannot get it. Stout defense from the Spartans. Top of the perimeter. A chance to drive inside. They do their best to get around this Spartan defense. Still no chance. And here comes the straightaway shot. That is a little bit wide to the right. Goes past the end line. CNS will maintain possession. Although that shot was wide right, it's good to see Justin Griffith finally getting a shot attempt in this one. The leading scorer for the North Stars. Now looking for the assisted goal up the middle and cannot get the shot off and almost trickles behind the goalie, but a little bit to the right there, fortunate for ESM, and they're able to clear the ball the other way. Oh, and now a straightaway chance for ESM to take the shot, and he scores. How about that? A beautiful set-up chance for the Spartans, and that was number nine for ESM, Michael Cock. Oh, no, it was, uh, it was Lance Madonna, was it not? Yes, it was Lance Madonna. How about that? So you got two very impressive players, both first-team All-Stars on East Syracuse Manoa. And one is Michael Cox, the other one's Lance Madonna. So odds are it's going to be one of those guys every single time. Lance Madonna picking up his first goal of the day. Yeah, it's his fifth of the season as well. So he's now got five goals and five assists on the early campaign. And that was a bit of an unlucky series of events for the North Stars. The long pass from Lemelbaum downfield just kind of took a short hop over the CNS defense right into the stick of Madonna, and when you're point blank, you're not going to miss. It's the third time it's happened for ESM today. 3-2 to two ESM is the score, 2-17 to go in the first quarter. Fight for the ball at midfield, right out of the faceoff. ESM tries to scoop it up. CNS try to get it to go their way as it trickles towards the near side and, and momentarily picked up by Riley Kennedy for the North Stars, and somehow he's able to work it back behind the goal CNS looking for that wraparound assist, nothing going. Now the near side, a chance for CNS to set up their offense. Anthony Semino passes and then losing the ball on the near side. CNS will clear it back to the top of the perimeter, 135 to go in the first quarter. Connor Lynch works it around the perimeter again, now back to X. Wrapping around for the assist, but double teamed by the Spartans. Coming in hot for the shot, and that is just a little bit wide left and blasted into the ground. It goes out of bounds, but it'll be CNS ball. So the North Stars now down by one, 118 to go in the first quarter. Chance to go ahead and tie this game here with this possession. Looking to break away from his defender and losing the ball. He thought there was somebody there to pass it to, but instead it goes back into the backfield, and it's going to be ESM ball on the miscue. Worked the other way by the Spartans. A quick transition chance, spinning around, looking for an opportunity to shoot. Great defense, and it's deflected and goes towards the end line, but going over to get it is Lance Madonna for the Spartans. Goes out of bounds. It'll be CNS ball. So Lance Madonna gets over to try and get the balls. It goes out of bounds, but instead the North Star is closest to it. Madonna really forced that last shot there. Had the defender on his back the whole way. Couldn't get the stick free and kind of got tangled up trying to go over that left shoulder for the shot. Now to the far side for the North Stars now. Once again on offense, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. We get a whistle. And ESM is going to go ahead and take it the other way quickly. Quick transition chance, Lance Madonna breaking down the middle. Madonna is shot, and he scores. Lance Madonna, his second goal of the day, and it has been all Madonna and Hoodling so far tonight. Four goals for ESM, two by Gavin Hoodling, and two by Lance Madonna. Yeah, it's just a back and forth between these two at this point. Who's going to be the leading scorer? They both had four goals against Central Square. 
And right there, it's tur it's turnovers from CMS that ESM is now being now capitalizing on. Right there, they had too many guys cross over into the offensive side of the field in immediate turnover, and there's no stoppage of play. ESM could just pick up the ball and run on the whistle. And when they have numbers, guys like Madonna and Hoodling aren't going to miss. We've emphasized that all day. 22 seconds left in the first quarter. It's 4-2 to two ESM faceoff down at the middle of the CNS logo. And the North Stars will win it, take it immediately down the field. A quick chance, and that one is just a little bit wide, goes out of bounds, and everybody chasing the shot down. It'll be CNS ball regardless. Firth has been great at the faceoff X for CNS. He's really been able to keep them in this He's got them the opportunities on the offensive side. They just haven't quite been able to capitalize. And seven seconds, down to six. CNS trying to make something happen. The final moments of the first quarter and a great deflection at goal for the Spartans. They'll kill the rest of the clock, and that'll do it for the first quarter. Your score coming out of the first quarter of play, 4-2 to two ESM. And one thing that we know, Jacob, is that last year, CNS fell to ESM by a score of 13-8. to eight. So you got that five-goal margin in between the two of them. Right now, it's a two-goal game in favor of ESM. You know that certain players on this CNS squad remember that defeat from last year at the hands of the ESM Spartans. Do you think that factors into their style of play at all? I think there's a little more edge to the game this time around especially when your schools that are located near each other in high school sports, you know the guys you're playing against. So when you're coming off a loss against them, there's extra motivation to try and come back. So you have guys like junior Joshua Picard and senior Justin Griffith who were stymied offensively last year against ESM. They're going to try and get back into things. We haven't seen Picard get a shot off yet, but once he gets going, he's a three-year player on the varsity level already. If he can get a few shots to fall, he can get hot early on. He might be able to counter a guy like Madonna or Hoodling on the other side for ESM. So we'll go to break real quickly and be back for the second quarter of play. It's been all Hoodling and Madonna for ESM so far. Four to two Spartans. We'll be back in just a moment. And welcome back here to CNS for the start of the second quarter of play. ESM versus the Cicero North Syracuse North Stars. As CNS will work it down the field, they've got the offensive possession to begin the second quarter. Joel Blasco with an, Joel Firth with another faceoff win there. Drew, the ESM guy, Dylan May off a little early. But if he continues to get possession for the North Stars, they're going to be in good shape as we get down the stretch. Justin Griffith fighting to get open. Shot down the middle and a great save made. ESM doing their best with Logan Lemelbaum there. And the Spartans will work it the other way. Now a chance for Luke Rosacci to make something happen on offense. He gives it off in front of him. They'll work it to the top of the perimeter. Madonna now fighting towards the front of the goal. Slipping and falling down was Timothy Kraus. Ball loose, Madonna with a chance now, and he takes a straightaway shot that goes out of bounds, well past the end line. ESM closest to pick it up. 
Yeah, that shot there was deflected off senior Aiden Longley, who was standing in front of Cage. Nice job to get in front of the upper 90 shot from Madonna. Timothy Krause tried another one right there as well. Skips right past. No look shot underneath. A bit of a carpet burner there. Squeaks past the goalie. And it's his third of the day, a first half hat trick for Hoodling. Yeah, and we're just trying to fix some camera issues that we got going on in our projection setup over here. So we apologize for missing that last missing that last shot. But five to two ESM now as they try to bring the camera back up. Ten fifty-three to go here in the second quarter of play. And we're gonna have to put on our best radio act for a second. Oh my goodness. We got face-off coming up in the middle of the CNS logo, and oh, I'm hearing that maybe we're going to get back to the field. Let's see, and here we are. Welcome back to the field here at Cicero as we got a face-off going on in the middle of the CNS logo. Jacob, thank you so much for stepping in there for a moment while we fix that issue. Happy to help. You see the stick skills by Hootling have just been fantastic early on. He's really exemplified them on two of his three goals. Joel Firth taking a quick shot that just barely misses the goal. Goes out of bounds at the near side, and Looks like CNS will hold on to it. They will. Closest man there. And now they work it back to the top with Riley Kennedy. Kennedy prancing around. And now he gives it off back behind the goal. They'll work it around the perimeter. 10.25 to go here in the second quarter of play. Three goal lead for ESM. Looking for that wraparound shot and the assist does not go for anything. Quick deflection looked like off of one of the defenseman's feet. Second chance effort for CNS coming here, but the Spartans walk away with it. Ten minutes left in the second quarter, and ESM trying on quick transition to make something happen. Callahan able to pick up the ground ball in that last possession. The shorties on defense for ESM have played a big part today. Turnaround shot for the Spartans does not go. And the save for Cicero moves it the other way. The North Stars now with a chance, quickly moving downfield. Timothy Krause, that's the third shot attempt he's taken this early quarter. None have been able to fall. He hasn't quite been able to get everything behind that shot. He's tried to be a little shifty. He's more of a power guy ripping from deep. So the near side now, CNS trying to work the offense. It's Connor Lynch, the midfielder, bringing it up quickly, and Lynch loses the ball. How about that for ESM, able to force the almost turnover, and now the ball goes near the end line to the right side of the field. And it'll be ESM Ball, the closest man there, was a Spartan dressed in orange and blue. The passing and catching for Cicero North Syracuse coming back to bite them again. Every pass seems to be handcuffing the fellow attackman or midfielder, or whoever they're passing the ball to. They've been unable to get a good look ever since they took that early 2-0 lead. So CNS now with the ball. 8.56 to go in the second quarter, and the North Star is able to push it in for a goal, and they kind of climb closer to ESM. That was Matthew Kramer on the shot and score. 5-3 to three now, a two-goal difference, difference between ESM and CNS there. Going for differentiation doesn't make a lot of sense. No, two-goal difference between ESM and CNS. 8.53 in the second quarter. Yeah, that was a great look there for CNS. Joshua Pickard found Kramer right on the other side of the crease, and Kramer's able to catch the ball high in the quick transition to the low bounce shot, able to get it past Lemelbaum for the third goal of the day for the North Stars. So now at midfield, a two-goal game. ESM leads by two, just under nine minutes to play until halftime. CNS will try and continue clawing back here. Step one is winning this faceoff with Joel Firth at the helm, fighting for the ball, and he's able to walk away with the faceoff win. Work it back to X, and it's over the stick. High extended stick of Riley Kennedy goes out of bounds. ESM with a chance. Another uncaused turnover. Firth is doing the hard part. He's winning the faceoff. He's, win he's won almost all of the faceoffs. But then you get to the point and you can't make a clean pass to X behind Cage and you're unable to get an offensive possession rolling. Far side, ESM works it down and clears the ball. Come down the middle, they work it back out to the perimeter and they'll set up their offense as cleanly as possible.
You'd like to see ESM maybe work the ball a little quicker around the outside here, get a, some more off-ball movement. Most of the guys on the offensive side, especially the midfielders, are very stagnant right now. Taking a quick shot, and it looks like that one deflected off somebody. It, it perhaps may have been the goalie that the ball went a little bit errant off of. CNS ends up with it, and it goes towards the far side, nearly out of bounds, but the North Stars will hold on to the ball. CNS waiting to get their offensive middies onto the field, stalling a little bit against the ESM defense. Back at the top, the North Stars trying to get this offense going. Down by two, 7.24 left in the second quarter. Quick drive by CNS, but just no room there from the Spartan defense. I'd like to see the North Stars maybe work behind Cage a little bit more. Set a guy like Pickard or Griffith who can pass the ball with such great talent and find an open man cutting to the cage. Quick shot chance for CNS. Goes a little bit wide of the net to the left. Now a flag comes out. May have been a crease violation. No, it's a push on, I believe, CNS's Chase Kassler. No, the call was against ESM, actually. Oh, it was ESM. Versace, his third penalty of the day already. There we go. Pushed from behind. That's just a short 30-second technical. So you're going to have to see the North Star offense work very quickly here if they want to convert on another man-up opportunity. 6.58 to go in the second quarter of play. North Stars with the ball. They get a man-up opportunity here, 30 seconds. Behind the goal they go, and now feeding it down the middle, a chance for CNS goes, well, it's a no-go there because of Logan Lemelbaum able to pick the ball up and get it to the Spartans, working it across midfield, but instead CNS able to force the turnover at midfield, and now taking that long shot, or perhaps not, he faked it, sent it back, and there's the shot, and he scores. You always love to see that, a long pull with a goal on the day for CNS. When you're in transition, I guess whoever's open is going to take the shot. And it looked for a moment like he was going to hesitate, and then he comes in and goes straight for the shot. Great look there by Jason Meeks to find him down low for the easy shot attempt. And its stick skills are so important on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Joel Firth can win his fourth consecutive faceoff. 627 to go in the second quarter, and it's a faceoff win for CNS momentarily, and then all of a sudden, Spartan's there to pick it up and take it the other way. ESM now working it on the far side on this CNS defense. Trying to set up their offense. Down at X, it's Lance Madonna. Madonna turning around and able to get away from his defender just for a moment. Feeds it, but the ball goes a little bit errant of his intended target. Tried to be a little fancy there with the behind-the-back pass in front of Cage. Madonna unable to convert that. CNS able to get a timeout off when they still had possession on that last clear attempt. So with just under six minutes to go, they are going to have the ball coming out of this timeout. So 5.49 to go here in the second quarter of play. 5-4 to four is the score in favor of ESM. A close game here between two very talented teams. And we know that last year, like we talked about before, it was a 13-8 victory for ESM over CNS. And it's very impressive, you would think, from the CNS perspective, to be down by only one goal to a very talented ESM team. Yeah, a lot of guys on CNS have really stepped up, and it starts at the faceoff spot with Joel Firth. He's been fantastic, and if you can keep the ball out of ESM's hands or out of ESM's sticks, you're going to be in great shape, and they just have to continue to do that. It may be an issue come late in the second half, as Firth is the only guy who's taken a face-off attempt for the North Stars, and then on East Syracuse Manoa, you have three guys who have gone to the face Might 
in late game situations be in a bit better shape than Joel Firth as his legs have to get tired at some point because this is high school. There is no FOGO. He's not face off, get off. Joel Firth is winning that face off and then playing on the offensive side. He has the two two of the four goals for CMS. So the legs are going to tire out at some point. I think halftime and even this time out here is going to be a big help to him and the North Stars down the stretch. So we're under the lights here in Cicero. 5.49 to go in the second quarter of play. 5-4 is the score in favor of ESM. Everybody taking their positions to come out of the timeout. And here we go. The clock will wind. The whistle is blown, and CNS now with a chance to move the ball up the field. For the first time today, we're really seeing ESM ride on the clear against Cicero North Syracuse, but it was no match for the speed of Joel Firth. CNS works it to the far side. Now they'll take it back to X. Across the 10-yard line there, that near side of the field coming in for the shot. He loses the ball, and the Spartans are right there to get it. Now for ESM, taking a look at Eric Callahan and the rest of the Spartans, bringing it up the field. And we got a stoppage as the ball goes out of bounds, and CNS will take possession there in the miscue. Great job on that last defensive possession by Eric Callahan. A couple poke che checks there, able to knock the ball loose from Matthew Kramer. And that's the third or fourth cause turnover that Callahan has had alone in this first half. So CNS now with five minutes to go until halftime. Five to four is the score in favor of ESM. We get a whistle and a turnover. Did you catch that one, Jacob? I think it might have been too many guys on the offensive side once again. Not a lot of communication from either team right now. When a defender runs across normally, you want to hold your stick up high to show, I'm going on the wrong side of the field on this fast break. And I guess they really just haven't been doing that. Not a lot of communication on the field, and it's led to – a different type of on uncaused turnover. They're not throwing the ball out of bounds, but just as costly. Yeah, I think we're going to get this time out here mainly for each of these teams to talk about these uncaused mistakes. It has just been a torrential example of uncaused mistakes today. They've been coming left and right out of nowhere. Uh, these mistakes have led to all sorts of things, including numerous goals for each team, right? We, we've seen these balls go out of bounds, and immediately after a team picks it up out of the turnover, whether it's ESM or CNS, immediately working it downfield in quick transition and scoring. So it, just a testament today to how these, these unforced errors can really hurt you. Yeah, if, you were wa if you're watching this game and you see all the turnovers and you only see the turnovers from CNS, you'd think a team like ESM would have 10, 12 goals. But the issue is every time they go back in the offensive end, they're throwing the ball out of the back of the end zone. They can't pass the ball goal line extended. They've struggled around cage. And those are things that are, I guess, okay early season. But as we get down the stretch in the year and come playoff time, where this Spartans team is probably headed for, you can't have mistakes like that. I guess it's okay in game two to be tuning things up a little bit. But if you're head coach, Jonathan McCoy, you can't be happy with the turnovers from a team that was in the state playoff last year. That's right. Syracuse the, Manoa. the Spartans last year winning Class B, and, of course, they're trying to do that again. It's all going to fall on some of their stars. Lance Madonna especially will have to be the catalyst of some sort of effort by ESM this year. So last year he had the help of his brother. This year, not so much, but we'll see if Lance Madonna and this ESM team can make it down the stretch. Step one, winning at CNS tonight. Yeah, moving to 2-0 and would be huge, especially against a team in a higher class than they are. Jackson Palum for ESM gives it off to the near side and gets it right back. Palum back to that top of the perimeter towards midfield. Hoodling working on the right side there. You'd like to see him move a little closer to Cage, kind of compact the offense a little bit for the Spartans. Now Madonna trying for the wraparound shot, and that one goes in, and they're going to call that a good goal by Lance Madonna. So Madonna showing that quickness to get up in front of the goal out of X and taking a fast shot that lands in the back of the net. Lance Madonna has shown off today in the first half alone how good he is at shooting on both the right side and the left side. That last time, nice little hesitation dodge behind Cage, came along the left side of the crease, and a scoop shot kept started low, ended low, and it could not be saved by Joseph Bartolo, his third goal of the day. So it's 6-4 to four ESM, two-goal cushion for the Spartans, under five to go here in the second quarter of play, 4.23 on the clock until halftime. 
fight for the ball at midfield after the faceoff. Whole bunch of midfielders coming in to try and get it. It's the Spartans that eventually win and pick up the ground ball. Ball comes loose again. Now CNS able to find it into their sticks and bring it the other way, trying to clear. Across midfield they go, and we're going to get a penalty that comes out. It'll be a delayed penalty. CNS with a chance on offense. Yeah, Eric Callahan was kind of swinging his stick wildly there trying to get across after the turnover, and that's going to cost ESM unless the North Stars can score right here. So Justin Griffith coming around for CNS. The ball goes wide of the net, out past the end line, and it should be ESM ball as one of the Spartans was closest to it, but it looks like the official ruling as we're going to get the penalty here. Looks like they called the slash on Timothy Kraus. After that last turnover, his first penalty. This team has really racked up a lot of penalties in this first half. I believe that's their fifth. They've gotten lucky, though. They've been able to hold up on the man up, uh, man down opportunities. But eventually, you think their luck's going to run out. Six on five. Numbers aren't in their favor. So one-minute personal foul will give CNS an opportunity. Turning around, trying to get the wraparound out of X, but nothing going there. The Spartans holding up well on defense. Six-man CNS attack against the five-man defense of the Spartans. The North Stars have brought their offense a little more compact, a little closer together, but you'd like to see them take that next step and get, be a really tight-knit unit here and work the ball around quickly to get a good shot opportunity. Fake wind-up for the shot. Now they work it from the far side and take a shot that goes wide and past the end line. But CNS will maintain possession. Three minutes left until halftime. Six to four ESM is the score. Griffith had it for a moment, and now to the top of the perimeter here for CNS. They work it inside and score. So the ball flying around all over the place, and a nicely placed assist. Joshua Pickard finishes it off. Good to see Joshua Pickard get on the score sheet. That's his first goal of the day. And this is a guy who's been one of the best offensive players on the North Stars for the last three seasons. He played on this team as an eighth grader and had 19 goals. Oh, my goodness. As a freshman, had 37 goals. Last year, the numbers dipped a little bit. But you expect him to try and up his production level this yeah. year. Well, I mean, he's certainly got a great body of work to work from, and he's got a nice reputation, clearly, if he's that prolific at such a young age. So Joshua Pickard, the junior, getting on the board tonight. You saw what the North Stars did there, though, when they brought the offense very close to Cage and forced ESM to go into a little bit more of a man when you'd like to be in a zone when you're down 6-5 to five on the man-down opportunity. When you're forced to go out and face that guy straight away from Cage, it frees up that over-the-top pass to Pickard, who converted with ease. So CNS will take the ball off the faceoff and try and make the offense explode once more to try and tie the game. 2.30 to go until halftime. Near side they go. A chance for the North Stars to work it inside. It's Chase Kassler. Now the ball goes out of bounds in that right end line. CNS will hold on to it. North Stars now back towards that 35-yard line, driving in hard, looking for an open lane, cannot find one. Chance for a wraparound assist. The ball goes errant a little bit. The Spartans with a chance to pick it up, but CNS gets it right back. We may get a slash. Personal foul incoming. Ball loose, and we'll hear the official penalty. Anthony Semino had the right look there on goal line, extended on the near side, but Firth didn't cut quite early enough and ended up just running into traffic and was met by a big hit by defender Michael Cox. We'll get that, we'll get that 30 second penalty. Push in the back by Jack Maloling. His first penalty of the afternoon. CNS will Set up their offense and the man up opportunity. 30 seconds to go in that. 151 to go in the half. The Spartans able to force a turnover quickly working down that far side. Must ESM be. leading by one with a chance to build on their lead here. And I believe we, we may get an offside call. Or no, we're going to get a timeout. Timeout charge on ESM. When you have a second team all-star like Michael Cox, it, it must be a nice feeling 
when he's on the defensive end and a man down situation and he's able to cause a turnover when he's essentially having to guard two guys on the perimeter that takes a lot of skill and not only did he cause the turnover he had the ability and the awareness to go pick up the ground ball and take it across midfield and give Jonathan McCoy the opportunity to call a timeout probably draw up a play here for either Hoodling or Madonna to get one last goal before we come to the half. Yeah, we want to thank you so much again for tuning in to CNY Stream tonight, our first ever video broadcast. A big thank you to our producers, Ryan Clark and Will Shea to our left. And of course, thank you, Jacob, for joining us here. It has been a really great experience so far. A big thank you to everybody at CNS that made this possible by being so hospitable and providing us with the services that we needed. It really has been a great journey to this point. We hope to bring you more video broadcasts in the future, including one on Monday, JD versus ESM Lacrosse down in East Syracuse. Be sure to tune in for that. That will be at 6.30 on Monday, April 1st. Don't miss it at cnystream.com. Not only has this been a great opportunity, this has been a great game. Couldn't have expected this coming in. It was a five-goal difference in the game last year, 13-8 in favor of the Spartans. This Spartans team beat up on Central Square in the season opener. They won by 10 goals. It's a North Stars team that didn't really add too much talent, but they didn't lose too much talent either. You expected ESM to kind of come out firing, but it was the North Stars who had the early start. And ESM kind of clawed their way back. It's been a big back-and-forth game. So we're going to see if those coaches made any adjustments at this timeout, and especially at the half, to try and, first, I think it's limit the turnovers, and second, take a few sm smarter shots on cage. The Spartans with a chance here, one thirty to go until halftime, and it'll be ESM ball on the far side. They work it back to the top of that perimeter over there on the left side of the field. Jackson Palum. Palum back to Michael Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh drive it in and hands it off to his right. Now quick drive for ESM and a shot a little bit wide to the right. Nice save made. CNS will have a chance to clear. Bartolo saw the ball right out of the stick right there by Palum. Didn't hide the ball behind his helmet at all. Was able to get that cross-body save on that last shot attempt. Looks like the ball may have gone out of bounds, or perhaps somebody stepped out of bounds. No, we're going to get that time out called as there was a little bit of trouble on the near side. Looked like CNS and ESM fighting for that ball and some awareness there by the coach to call timeout. Was that an ESM timeout call? No, CNS timeout called and so with one minute remaining in the half CNS will take a moment to talk things over trailing by one both teams out of timeouts now and Jack McAndrew gonna try and do what Jonathan McCoy couldn't and draw up a play for an easy goal here taking his timeout with one minute left you see it a lot in lacrosse a lot at the end of quarters at the end of halves to draw try and draw up that one last shot attempt there is no shot clock right in high school lacrosse and for years, there wasn't one at the college level either. That's something they've implemented this year. High school hasn't done that yet, so they can take this full minute, and they'd have plenty more time, even with a shot clock, to draw up and find something good. And maybe you see them go back to that tight-knit offense surrounding the cage and force the ESM defenders to really play man-to-man -man defense because they've kind of settled in a zone a little bit at some cases here. And when they've been forced to go out and guard on the perimeter, you've had guys open down low like Pickard on that last play and Matthew Kramer on his goal. Guys have been able to get to the crease, and when they get to the crease, they've finished. So I think that's the key right now for CNS. One minute left until halftime, and we'll see if CNS can go ahead and tie this game as they're in their timeout. Now coming out of the timeout, like you said, Jacob, we're, we're being treated to a great game tonight, and last year we know that CNS fell to ESM by a five-goal margin it's only a one goal game and it could potentially be a tie game going into the halfway point. So CNS has to be proud so far, but it is a race to the finish line and they'll try and finish on top today. Right now, down by one. Four ESM guys trying to prevent Firth on the clear there and they couldn't do it. The speed just too much. So the North Stars quickly setting up their offense with 45 seconds left in the half. To the near side they go. Nolan Firth gives it off and a shot down the middle. That is no good past the end line. CNS will maintain possession. Closest man there was wearing gray and blue. 33 seconds left until the half. Looking for that wraparound shot. Down the middle they go. And a nice deflection by Lemelbaum. Diving for the ball. It goes right back to the North Stars. A chance for a 
very quick responses instead held up to set up the offense again 17 seconds until halftime now CNS has to work quickly again coming out of X and scoring how about that from CNS so they missed the shot deflected off of Wemmelbaum they come right back with Joshua Pickard he drives it into the net we are tied 6-6 six, six. Picard with a great move coming from X there similar to the last goal we saw Madonna score just kind of Little hesitation, draw your defender off his strong side, break around the cage on a nice sweet shot. Easy money for Picard. This is his second goal of the game. 6-6 six, six, tie, 12 seconds until the halfway mark. We got a quick face off, most likely the last one of the half. The referee places the ball. Steps away, blows the whistle, and here we go. The North Stars win the faceoff. Ground ball picked up. They work into a little left, and quick shot taken from about the 25-yard line is defended by Lemelbaum. He fires downfield to expire the clock, and we go into triple zeros as the halfway mark is reached here at Cicero. 6-6 six, six tie, and Jacob, you could not ask for a better first half in some ways, but also a little bit sloppy by both of these teams. There's no doubt about it. We saw a lot of unforced errors. So it's a tie game, a close game, competitive on the bright side, but on the not so bright side, probably not the best effort from either of these teams when it comes to holding on to the ball. Yeah, you expect them to sure things up a little bit once they head to the locker room and have these halftime discussions. It seems as if guys have had trouble seeing the ball. I think that's been the issue on the offensive side when trying to pass and catch the simple things. You'll learn this when you're playing youth lacrosse. They've struggled today. It might have to do with the lights. It might not. But, you know, who hasn't struggled to see the ball? That's the goalkeepers. They've made some outstanding saves today. So when the ball's coming in from the top of cage, they've made great saves. They've had great looks, whether it's cross the body, top to bottom. They've had great movement with their stick. And if they can keep that up, we're going to have a very close game. A couple saves at the end there by Lemelbaum were just outstanding. Guys shooting from wide open shots that are going to fall the majority of the time. And he's able to get his stick across his body quick enough to make that save. And that's what's impressed me in the first half has been the goalkeeper play and then the faceoff play for CNS. And it's so difficult for a guy like Lemelbaum or really any goalie at the high school or collegiate level of lacrosse to be able to defend those bouncing ground balls or those shots that come in raring right by their heads, coming in like speeding bullets. But Lemelbaum does it with such poise, and he's pretty much able to defend anything that comes into his close vicinity. A lot of the shots that have gone for CNS tonight have been those wraparound assist shots where they come quickly out of X. They're able to give the assist off to a driving offensive attackman who slams it down the middle for a goal, and those are just so difficult to defend. Yeah, the thing I've seen from Lemelbaum, the one note would be on those wraparound shots, cut off your angles a little bit more. He's been a little bit delayed trying to get his body to cut off the little opening between him and the near side pole. If he can do that, he's going to limit some of those wraparound shots. He's got no problem moving the stick, but the, the head of the stick can only cover so much ground. If there is open space and you have guys like Joshua Picard and Joel Firth, they're going to convert those shots, and we've seen that's the reason they have two goals apiece, and it's the reason this game that we thought might be lopsided coming in is 6-6 six to six going into the half. And for ESM, in terms of offense, we saw tremendous performances from Gavin Hoodling and Lance Madonna, who both began the game with a lot of offensive firepower, but started to slow down a little bit towards the end of that second quarter. Is that a testament, do you think, to the CNS defense? I think the CNS defense has played good. I don't know if that's the reason they're slowing down. I think it's because they've been the only two who've been able to do anything offensively. They're responsible for all the goals. They each have a hat trick in this first half. So I don't know if you can say they were slowing down because how many guys can go out there, put in three goals each in the first half of a lacrosse game? There aren't too many out there, especially at the high school level. CNS defense has been good, and they've done a great job of not letting anyone else beat them because you know going in you're not going to shut down a guy like Madonna. You're not going to shut down a guy like Hootling. They're just too good. But if you can limit anyone else from beating you, you're in good shape, and we've seen that, and it's the reason it's 6-6. Six to six. CNS with a lot of momentum going into the halfway mark. We'll be back for the start of the third quarter. 6-6 six to six your score right here on CMY Stream. Stay with us for the start of the second half.
and welcome back here to CNS in Cicero, New York. We got a great lacrosse game going, and we're getting ready for the start of the third quarter between Cicero North Syracuse and East Syracuse Manoa. I'm Julian Barron alongside Jacob Kronberg. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight for what is a really outstanding game, tied 6-6, heading into the start of the second half. And if we're talking about ESM, Jacob, we have got to talk about Lance Madonna and his good friend Gavin Hoodling. The two of them have just been absolutely outstanding for the Spartans, accounting for all of the goals tonight. So we came in, and obviously Lance Madonna is the name that people in the section know. If you follow across, you know Lance Madonna, and he's been fantastic. But personally, I've been more impressed by Gavin Hoodling and his ability to create his own shot from far out, work from straight away from cage, and the stick skills have been fantastic. He's been able to break double teams multiple times to score. And as only a sophomore, you expect stuff like that to grow. will get a little more speed on his shot. And I expect a couple more goals out of the sophomore this half. Yeah, really impressive performance for the sophomore, Gavin Hoodling. CNS will begin the half with the ball after winning the faceoff and taking it to the left of the field. And that's where they will begin the third quarter. That's the ninth faceoff win for Joel Firth, and that's the first faceoff of the second half. Outstanding numbers. Winding up, looking for the shot there momentarily was Jason Mergs, or Meigs rather. Now slashing, looking for a goal, and he scores. How about that? Running down the middle of the goal and firing it in to give CNS the lead, 7-6. to six. That was Joel Firth coming in for the score. Joel Firth? That's a hat trick for Joel Firth. Yes, the faceoff man has been all over the field, as we said before. It's not a FOGO in high school. He stays on the offensive attack. And for CNS, it's a good thing he stays in the offensive attack. He's got three of their seven goals, and they've all come in similar fashion with him cutting off the ball. He's one of the few guys on the field today that's continuously moved when the ball's not in his stick, and it's paid off. We'll get the face off at midfield. Seven to six is the score in favor of CNS, and they win the face off. We'll take it the other way, take it the left way, rather. Now, working it down the middle, taking that quick shot, deflected up into the air. Nice save by Logan Lemelbaum. Spartans. Slow things down, and ESM will get a chance now at midfield. Stick comes loose. Ball picked up by Gavin Hoodling. Hoodling coming in, quick drive, shot. That one bounces away from the net, goes out of bounds, and it'll be picked up over on the right side of the field by Lance Madonna. Hoodling looks a little anxious on that shot there. Split the defense with rather ease. Didn't, I don't think he realized how much space he had coming up before the crease. Top of that perimeter, it's Jackson Palum. Palum sends it back. Luke Versace there. Working it to the far side again. Back to Luke Versace, the 2018 first team all-star per Syracuse.com. Versace driving in quickly, looking for a chance. Cannot find a lane. Turns around and loses the ball. A chance for CNS to pick it up. Still errant, and now ESM gets it back at X. Spinning around, taking a shot, and Lance Madonna scores. ESM laying down their dominance on the stick of Lance Madonna. We are tied. Lance Madonna's goal right there. Basically, uh, it could have been a replay of the third goal he scored, starting behind X and absolutely breaking down his defender. He had Aiden Longley basically falling down onto his butt there, broke around cage, and he sh his shot is just too effective. He's not going to miss when he's that close. Fourth goal of the day for Lance Madonna, who is putting on a show. Tied again, Jacob. It's deja vu all over again. At midfield, we'll see another faceoff. Firth has been so effective on these faceoffs. You might, I might like to see ESM maybe try two long pulls on the wings for the faceoff. Have a little more extra reach, a little extra length there try and recover the ground ball because Firth hasn't been picking them up cleanly. They've been loose. Quick fight between Firth and Callahan turns into a CNS possession for a moment and now we have a player down. Injury just in front of that CNS logo at midfield and a number of players coming over to attend to him. We'll see an athletic trainer come out as well. Yeah, the CNS defender led with his head a little bit there. Went over to apologize immediately after. He was the first one to go down to the ESM wing who was on the ground. Can't quite make out 
who was on the ground. I think it's Eric Callahan who was at the face-off X that time. Well, it looked like Callahan and Firth just got into an absolute boxing match over the ball. One of them was falling down. The other one was trying to pick the ball up and take it the other way. And instead of anybody getting a clear possession, one man falls down in injury, and the other man turns around to watch his I, I want to say game mate, not teammate, because he plays for the other team, but perhaps uh, game mate. Is that a word? Can we coin I think that we term? We call tonight? him this opposition. Opposition. I think that's a, probably a better way to put it, Jacob. But regardless, he's walking off the field right now, and we can indeed confirm that that is Callahan. I don't think Firth was the one who hit him, though. I think that was Connor Lynch who came off from the wing, and Callahan was just kind of not ready for the hit. It was like in football hitting a un. Hitting a defender who's just not aware. There you go. Hitting a defenseless, defenseless receiver. Re defenseless, defenseless receiver. Whoever it may be. A defenseless attackman in Eric Callahan. So Callahan comes off the field, and he's being attended to on that near side, near the track that loops around the CNS Stadium. Checking into the game in his place on the ESM Spartans is Matthew Kenny, the sophomore midfielder. CNS will begin this possession coming out of that stoppage for energy for, for injury excuse me now the x they work it to the far side long pole playing defense there breaks away momentarily turns around tries for the shot lemon bomb goes up to stop it but instead the ball skips away and stays with cns driving down the middle now a quick chance taking that shot and it goes wide Stretching out the sticks, it'll be CNS ball. Firth has tried that shot a couple times, running left and just kind of shooting across his body. And every time he's been wide right, I'd like to see him maybe come over the top a little bit more on those shots, get some downward action and actually put them on cage. He might have more than a hat trick already then. Great save by Logan Lemelbaum. How about it? He's had a great performance tonight. Right there, able to stop a shot that came in on him low. ESM. Working it down the far side, brings it across midfield, and looks like someone may have stepped out of bounds. As good as Lemelbaum has been protecting the cage, his decision-making when it comes for clears, I think he's trying too much. Too many passes have gone all the way across midfield in the air when he might just want to put the ball in the hands of the defensive middies and let them run with it. CNS again on offense. That left side of the field has been their home so far in the third quarter. Nine minutes left until the end of the third quarter. Man falls down to the near side. They work it back to X. Again, want to apologize for losing our, our clock that we had on screen for just a little bit there. We know it wasn't the best quality, and we're going to have an upgraded clock for our broadcast on Monday, so we do apologize for that. We'll try and give you updates as much as we can as the score comes right through the middle. Great look, shot, and a finish for Ethan Barrett. Ethan Barrett finally getting involved on the offensive end. The junior attackman was camped right outside the cage. They were just kind of waiting for the pass, and eventually pass came from Joshua Picard, and Barrett was able to finish there. Nice move going high to high. Kind of faked low, went up top right corner, get the shot past Lemelbaum. It's interesting because you say top right corner, but in a way that shot was almost dead center. It was very close to that crossbar that stands above Lemelbaum. Right there, you can see how the, the goal sort of goes into that. I, I don't know what you'd call that shape. You call it a square shape. It doesn't really have a bottom to it. But that top of the square, it just went right under it, and it almost went over Lemelbaum's head. Yeah, it nearly nicked the crossbar right there. And those are the shots you just dream of if you're an attackman because there's nothing a goalie can do to stop that. Get a little skim there, picks up a little bit of speed, bounces right into the goal. And that's Barrett's first of the day, first of the season. So Connor Lynch comes into the game for CNS as the North Stars maintain possession into this. I, I was going to say possession again, but you know what? We're going to, yeah, I feel like that's the right terminology. This time down the field. There we go. Seems like CNS has just held on to the ball for almost all of this quarter so far. Yeah, ESM has the one goal by Madonna, but that was scored in about 15 seconds on offense. They'll work it back behind the net. CNS just playing catch here, working around the perimeter. Spartan defense trying to hold. Here comes a drive, turn around, looking for that clear shot, cannot find it, steps back and takes his time. 7.45 to go until the end of the third quarter. 
Got a step on his defender, and tries to pass inside, and almost a pretty assist, but instead the ball works back to X. We get a flag out. Now fighting for the ball, and nearly a ground ball chance. Shot taken, deflects off of Lemelbaum. Ball high in the air, and now fighting for it down towards that 20 yard line of the far side. A lot of stick action. Chance to recover and take a shot. CNS does not capitalize. Still got that delayed penalty. And will go against the Spartans. See if third time's a charm, third shot, maybe CNS can get it to fall. Quick shot, Lemelbaum able to deflect that one, falls to his left, and now we will finally see that penalty enforced. That possession right there, very lengthy for the North Stars. And on top of that, you're going to have to go in and play in your man down unit again. It's going to be tired legs, even though it's early in this third quarter. That's a lot of time on defense for a couple 17, 18-year-olds. And they were just unable to pick up that ground ball and get to the penalty a little sooner. So the call goes against the Spartans as we knew it would. I believe it was a personal foul, waiting on the time. And that goes against Michael Cox, who is the best defender for the Spartans. It's going to be really tough to stop the North Stars man-up unit without your number one defender on the field. Well, let's see what the North Stars can muster here. Under seven minutes to go until the end of the third quarter. They work it inside and a straightaway shot that goes well past the end line of the left side of the field. Chase Kassler trying to rip from straight away there a little too high. So a one minute penalty that keeps Michael Cox out. CNS taking that straightaway assist chance. It almost goes high off of Lemelbaum and now the ball trickles away from him and Spartans have a chance to recover it. Lemelbaum gets it. Now the near side they go with their long stick as they set up their midfield play. Lemelbaum sends it well done field and they bring it across the other side of the field here at CNS. 6-10 to go in the third quarter. Down a man, the Spartans trying to just hold on. Well, if you're ESN, you have to hold on to the ball here because this penalty on Michael Cox is unreleasable, so a goal will not allow him back on the field and for you to get back to even strength. So you have to kill this minute here to get back to full strength and keep the ball out of the hands of the North Stars man up attack. 5.45 left in the third quarter. 8-7 to seven the score. CNS leading by one. It's Gavin Hoodling in the near side, bringing it across the 10, now back towards X. Hoodling being chased back towards the end line. Still holding on to the ball. Hoodling turns around, tries to put the move on, and here goes Gavin Hoodling looking for the turnaround, cannot get it. Still with the ball, Gavin Hoodling. And now they drive it, and underneath they go for the score. Beautiful shot from Timothy Kraus. ESM ties the game at eight. Kraus with a beautiful shot into the back of the net. Timothy Kraus, great move there, going low to high with the shot, using the angles to his advantage. And it's good to see him on the scorebook. Had a hat trick in the season opener against Central Square. Had a couple shot attempts in this first half that couldn't, didn't quite get past goalkeeper Joseph Bartoli. Had a couple that he airmailed over Cage. And that might get things going now that someone besides Madonna and Hoodling have found the back of the net for ESM. 5-11 is the time left until we reach the fourth quarter. Tie game, 8-8 between CNS and ESM here on CMY Stream. Want to remind you, you can find all things CMY Stream at CMYStream.com. That is your online home of Central New York High School sports live coverage every day and night of all three athletic seasons. CNS works it to X. Now a chance at the top of that perimeter there. Back to even strength is ESM, so they might go back to the man-to-man -man defense. CNS just playing catch. Now the North Stars trying to penetrate a little bit and turn around chance. No good. Spartan defense holds. Trotting around on the far side, trying to find a lane. Cannot get it. Back to the edge of X and to the 10-yard line. Back to the 20. They work back to the top. Quick drive, no turnaround chance, and the lane is closed up quickly. 
CNS putting together a good offense possession here. Chris, ball movement. You look for a couple off-ball cutters here, hopefully. CNS still just being absolutely defeated on this possession by the Spartan defense. Cannot find any penetration. North Stars still struggling. Now we'll see if they can get a drive on. CNS coming in quick. Looking for the chance of the near side. Quick wind up shot and that falls wide of the net and back past the end line. A really strong shot off the stick of Joel Firth. CNS will maintain possession as it goes out of bounds. Firth didn't quite get on top of that shot enough. Needed a little downward action there with the speed on the shot from the left wing. See if he goes for try number two here. Yeah, Firth putting a move on. Now he has room, takes a shot, and level bomb with a great save. You like that Firth has the confidence to shoot with both hands, but it's very easy to see this discrepancy between his right-handed shots and his left-handed shots. There's just so much more heat and strength behind it when it comes off his right side. That left-handed shot must have seemed kind of slow to Lemel bomb coming in. Timothy Krause with it. Spartans can set up an offensive possession with Jackson Paloum at the top of that perimeter. Three minutes left until the end of the third quarter. Paloum coming in hot, looking for a lane to drive, cannot get it. He's bounced around by this CNS defense. Now it's Michael Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh fought away by the North Stars. Cavanaugh trying for that second chance. Inside they go. Shot chance and he scores. Timothy Krause lays it into the net with power. And it's 9-8 to eight ESM. Timothy Krause starting to get things going. Two straight goals for ESM. Both go under his name. And now we've got three guys kind of working for the Spartans. Maybe this is where they try to pull apart get a multiple goal lead. They haven't had a multiple goal lead since they were up six to four in the second quarter. So maybe not that you have Krause and they're gonna have to go out and respect his shot. It gives even more wide open opportunities to guys like Madonna and Hootling. And that three man game is gonna be very, very tough to stop for the North Stars. A one goal advantage for ESM, nine to eight is the score. 252 left in the third quarter. Glad to have you with us here on CMY Stream. ESM trying their best to get on top of the North Stars, but each time they have, uh, CNS has just come clawing back. Face-off victory for CNS now as the North Stars will try once again to get a successful offensive possession of the left side of the field. 2.40 to go until we reach the start of the fourth quarter. Near side, the pass goes errant off the stick of Mason Blakeman. Now to the near side, a chance for Gavin Hoodling to bring it up and clear for ESM. Hoodling across the 30, down to the 25, and Hoodling looking for the perfect shot. Instead, he goes for the assist, wrap around, and a score. ESM laying it on here at the end of the third quarter. This time, it's Lance Madonna, 2018 first team all star, according to Syracuse.com, putting together a nice resume to return to that list in 2019. That is his fifth goal of the game Julian and just as pretty as the last coming around from the back of the cage and the composure of Gavin Hoodling to find his fellow attackman cutting through every time Hoodling has the ball he doesn't look like he's under any pressure he's never rushing and for someone who's only a sophomore that's not something you see very often he's always knows what's going on he seems like he's one step ahead of the defender and right there found Madonna who was wide open for his fifth goal of the day Really an incredible job by Lance Madonna to cut in front of the net, able to lay it in without violating the crease. And CNS wins the faceoff again, getting the ball down by two. Maybe they can make something happen with two minutes until the fourth quarter, but instead they turn it over to ESM Oldham almost immediately. Costly turnover there. The pass behind Cage just kind of choked up the defend, choked up the attackman, knocked right out of bounds off the inside of his stick. And ESM may be on a bit of a roll here. Here comes Justin Smith. Smith on the near side. Being fought on by CNS. He's able to find a lane. Smith coming down hard. The ball pops free. CNS trying to fall on it. And they do. I'll try and clear here. Quick pass over to the far side. Just crossing the field. Trying to get away from the apprehending Spartans. CNS now down the middle, and they'll step back for their offense. 119 to go until the fourth quarter. We'll see some substitutions. Checking into the game for CNS is Mason Blakeman, the freshman midfielder. 
Nolan's Nolan Firth did a great job clearing on that last possession. Nice pickup of the ground ball, took it up the right side and able to get around a few ESM attackmen trying to stop the clear. Now a chance to put on that wraparound offense, but instead the ball comes loose and ESM able to get it. It's Lemonbaum who gives it off to the far side and his defenseman will give it down to his midfielders as they try and clear. Quick chance here for ESM in transition. Here's Madonna. Lemelbaum did exactly what you want out of your goalkeeper there. He cut off the angle onto the near side, put himself right up against the crossbar and was able to make what's relatively an easy save from the goalkeeper when it's right into your body and you don't have to move. So Timothy Krause on the far side, gives it off to Callahan who's back in the game. Now at the top of that perimeter, it's Luke Rosacci. Rosacci coming in on a hard drive, and he passes to the interior. Ball comes free momentarily. Now to the near side for Gavin Hoodling, who bobbles it, picks it up and plants his foot back at the 30. Gavin Hoodling coming in hard, looking for the shot. He takes it, and this ball bobbles away from the net. A whole scrum of gray and blue jerseys as we reach the end of the third quarter here at CNS. The North Stars down by two. ESM leading by two, just another way to say the same thing. It's a two goal margin, no matter how you slice it here, Jacob. We've had a great game to this point. ESM coming into this game likely is the favorite for anybody that knows Section 3 boys lacrosse very well, considering they're the Class B champions from last year. They have a returning star in Lance Madonna alongside Gavin Hoodling and a great supporting cast all around, including Ru Luke Rosacci and a whole bunch of young guys that look pretty promising tonight. But at the end of the day, CNS really has fought with about as much vengeance and as much energy as you could. And that starts at the faceoff. Joel Firth, I've said it all night, and I just can't stop. I've been so pleased with his play at the faceoff X. He's won two-thirds of the faceoffs in the entire game, and he's been able to limit the possessions that ESM is getting. Every time after a goal, CNS has the ball essentially right back with another chance to capitalize. But those last three, four minutes of the third quarter, ESM took over. They dominated. They fought, forced three or four turnovers there, a couple saves by Lemelbaum and Timothy Krause with two big goals there. And when guys that aren't Madonna or Hoodling are finding the back of the net, when they're finding Twine, this is going to be a really tough team to beat. We'll see if that carries over to the fourth quarter. Now Lance Madonna has put his foot on the gas pedal here in the third quarter, but we're going over to the fourth quarter here. And we know that Lance Madonna has his eyes on the prize as well as the rest of these ESM Spartans. Up by two, heading to the start of the final quarter, barring overtime, which in this game you certainly could not roll out considering the amount of times we have been tied today. But we'll take a moment away from the camera. We'll be right back here on CMY Stream. Stay tuned for the start of the fourth quarter in just a few moments. And welcome back here to CNS, Cicero, New York. A beautiful night for some lacrosse. It's a 10 to 8 ESM lead as we begin the fourth quarter of play here on CMY Stream. Face off win for CNS. No surprise. Yeah, I mean, really at this point, it's just been Joel Firth dominating at midfield all day. Chance now for the North Stars to cut into this ESM lead. A Quick shot, and that is deflected off of Lemelbaum, taken the other way by ESM. And here we go. Bounces out of the stick momentarily of Zachary Christian, who's checked into the game for ESM, and now CNS taking it the other direction. We get a flag out. 
a whole bunch of commotion going on there. One moment ESM has possession, the next moment CNS gets possession, and now we have a flag out, and we'll see how this penalty is assessed. For the fourth time today, Luke Rosacci looks like he's heading in after another penalty, a technical push in the back. So, yeah, that'll be a 30-second penalty. Rosacci will check out. As CNS, Callahan. And you know what? CNS needs an opportunity like this to capitalize. Maybe cut into this ESM lead a little bit. Yeah, another man up opportunity. And they've been pretty good on the man up so far today. Right now they look a little spread out. They've been able to capitalize when very close to cage. Now near the goal, they work it out of X and trying down the middle. It deflects maybe off of the foot of Lemelbaum and take it the other way with the Spartans. They'll try and kill this penalty. But CNS is going to get the ball back and a couple substitutions coming up for ESM. Eric Callahan checks into the game. Back to even strength, the 32nd man up. No good for CNS. So successfully killed by the Spartans. CNS now will have to fight their way to another goal. We'll have to do it on a five on five, op or we'll, we'll have to do it at even strength. Let's call it that. We have no idea what the future holds. We could potentially see some more penalties down the road. Can't bar that. CNS looks pretty good working the ball around right now. They're very spread out though. So those long passes may lead to some of those turnovers you saw early in the game with guys not quite being able to get the ball all the way across the field from sideline to sideline. Yeah, CNS again trying to work this offense out of X. Coming around, wraparound shot, no good. Goes to the end line. They chase the shot, both the Spartans and CNS do. It goes out of bounds, and it will be CNS ball. Now to the near side they go. Again, trying to find a lane to penetrate. Cannot. Coming in, trying to penetrate the Spartan defense. Again, nothing going. They work back to X and they'll try and get it back in front of the goal once more. Trying to put a move on. Cutting around the other way. Down the middle. Again, nothing. And the ball goes towards the end line. Somehow momentarily kept in bounds by CNS. But the Spartans will take it the other way. And now we'll see them set up their six men on offense in just a moment as we have a couple of guys running into each other on the far side. Fox essentially able to eat that big hit coming down on the clear. Spartans with a chance here to build on their two goal lead. Let's see if they can under nine to go in the fourth quarter in this game, really barring overtime. It's Gavin Hodling. Hodling trying to direct traffic and open up some Spartan offensive opportunities. Odling now the near side, just jogging his way. Closely covered, cradling the ball well. Let's it go, gets it back out to the top of that perimeter. It's Jackson Palum, or Palum rather. Palum turns around and again, looking for that opening to shoot, coming in hot. Palum falls down as he Tries to turn the corner and go the other way with it. Ball comes free for a moment. Palem gets it back, and it's deflected back to the near side. Palem again has to try and recover. Top of the arc they go. Guess the perimeter, you could really call it. Ball comes loose. They were trying to get it to Michael Cavanaugh. And Cavanaugh loses it. Another fight for the ball. Now a quick shot opportunity. It's deflected and goes out of bounds well past the end line. ESM will hold on. Jonathan McCoy in the ESM bench really wanted a push in the back against CNS there when Palem had the ball in the near side wing. Did not get it, and they have not had a man-off opportunity yet today. The penalty numbers have been very uneven in this game. And a quick shot chance, but that ball goes a little bit errant, and CNS will have an opportunity to take it the other way here in a quick transition, racing down the field. And it should, I, I was surprised to not see an offsides call there, you would think for a moment, as it looked like perhaps just a, a little bit too much action by the midfielders of CNS. Now we are gonna get a stoppage, and it looks like the CNS coach is livid. 
We're going to get some substitutions as well. And I was, I was very surprised myself, Jacob. I, I stopped talking, expecting an obvious offsides call, and we didn't get it. Yeah, it seems like the official just wasn't really paying attention, which is <laughs> kind of surprising because it was right at the face-off X where Michael Cavanaugh just kind of took a little hop step over the midfield line. I guess he recovered in time. They thought he wasn't impacting the play, but that's not really how the rule works. Well, regardless, here we are. ESM will try and build on their two-goal lead here. Seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. To the near side they go. Back to X with Luke Rosacci. Rosacci trying to spin it the other way. Still no room to drive on this CNS defense. Man, they have been good. This is crunch time for CNS, no doubt. Nearly halfway through this fourth quarter, and nobody's been able to find the back of the net yet, which is surprising. You expect Hoddling to look for a shot here. And a quick shot taken. That one looked like it went over the crossbar out of bounds. It will stay with ESM. Put a little extra heat on that one. The high heat, you could call it. Fitting with opening day, having come yesterday. Quick shot taken, and that is no good. Bounced up into the air. A whole bunch of gray and blue jerseys over there to try and get it, but ultimately it is Lance Madonna who gets it for ESM. Long shot taken, and that is no good off the stick of Timothy Kraus. ESM does maintain possession, and now they have a chance to work the offense around the whole perimeter of the left side of the field. Six minutes to go until the end of the fourth quarter, the end of this game perhaps. Quick drive coming. ESM feeds it down the middle. Tim Kraus as he slams it home and he scores. Incredible pump fake there by Timothy Kraus. Looked like he was going over the top of that shot. Drew both CNS defenders at him and then he just split the defense. Was wide open in front of Cage and there was nothing Bartolo could do there. ESM with their foot on the neck of CNS right now. They've got a three goal lead and you know the North Stars. And normally the North Star is something that people throughout history have used as guidance, wherever they may be geographically. I think the North Stars need a little bit of guidance right now, down by three with only six minutes left to go in this game because they are struggling to get something going offensively, even with the prolific face-off play of Joel Firth. I think they need some goals, not necessarily guidance here. Well, but some guidance on how to get those goals. You got to start somewhere, right? ESM has scored the last four. They trailed 8-7, to seven, now up 8-11, and things seem to be cooking because Timothy Krause, the third Spartan with a hat trick tonight. Oh, now the ball goes into the corner and it goes out of bounds. It, are they going to call that CNS ball? It looked like perhaps one of the ESM Spartans chased the shot, but now we're going to get a timeout, I believe called by the North Stars. That last one wasn't off a shot. The ball was just kind of tipped out of bounds on the offensive side. ESM was the last to touch it, so the right call, the ball went to the North Stars. You know, sometimes, and I, I have to apologize, sometimes when uh, you see a lacrosse player chasing a ball that goes out of bounds, you just naturally call it chasing the shot because, you know, that's what you do. The, the ball goes out of bounds, everybody extends their stick to try and get possession, chasing the shot. But, of course, not actually a shot there because we saw it was just a ball that went free over into the corner. So sometimes terminology can be a little bit weird. But here we are, a three-goal game, 5.42 to go until the end of this one. It's been a fun game, no doubt. It's been great to watch. We've seen a number of ties, a number of leads blown. We've seen each of these teams have their, their moments of, of truth, of victory, of, of whatever you want to call it, these small individual victories for both of these teams throughout the game. One minute it's Lance Madonna. The next minute you see CNS turning around, whether it be Justin Griffith or Joel Firth winning faceoffs, whoever it may be, uh, these teams, someone's got to win. And CNS, can they make the push to the finish line? I don't know if they have another comeback left in them. I think, as you said it before, ESM's kind of got their foot on the neck of the North Stars, and all that's left is just kind of step down on it. Yeah, well, we'll see if they're able to do that as uh, we got all the players taking the field here. Wanna, once again, we would like to thank you so much for tuning into tonight's broadcast on CMY Stream. Our first ever video broadcast, I want to give a big shout out to both of our producers to my left, Ryan Clark and Will Shea. Thank you so much to both of them. They have been fantastic tonight. And a lot of what we're doing tonight is experimental. And we really do appreciate you taking the time to bear with us as we figure everything out of the video. And we hope to bring you even more high quality video broadcasts throughout our future.
5.42 to go in the fourth quarter. CNS will get the ball to begin the play out of the stoppage. We'll see if CNS has one last comeback in them. It's been a back and forth all day. But this pushback from ESM just may be too much to handle as they've scored four straight and lead by three. Now CNS just taking their time here. Of course, we will get to the point where time is of the essence for the North Stars. Down by three, waning moments of the fourth quarter approaching. Ball comes loose for just a moment and a chance for ESM to perhaps poke it away. But instead, CNS holds on to it with good ball handling and a shot taken a little bit wide. Ground ball now on the left side of the net over to the far side of the field and diving. We got a Spartan falling out of bounds and it should be CNS ball. I think that is what they're going to call it. If you're the North Stars, you're obviously looking to score quick and early in this possession as we're under five minutes to play. But what's really good if you're CNS is Joel Firth is your face-off guy. So if you score, <laughs> you have a very good chance of getting the ball back right away to kind of complete and take the next step in this comeback. That's like any single time you see the North Stars fall or struggle, they always have Joel Firth to lean on because you know that he is going to have a pretty good chance of winning a face-off. The ball comes loose momentarily as they're trying to fight to bring it out of the X. CNS has to get on top of this one, and the ball goes out of bounds. They chase the ball as it goes towards the end line, and I believe they're going to rule it ESM ball. They're able to extend their sticks far enough to get possession. Well, S Samini may have gotten away with a push in the back there on Michael Fox. Michael Cox. Cox was face planted into the turf there and almost had the man up opportunity for ESM and the gunslingers they have. They're likely to convert when they have the advantage. Now, now it's Eric Callahan for ESM. There is no doubt that we're going to see the Spartans just bide their time, choose some clock. Callahan back to X and he. Hands it off to Timothy Kraus, and we know Kraus loves to score, but he's going to have to just waste some time as he hands it off to Jackson Palem. For one of the first times today, we see Lance Madonna kind of creeping into the midfield aspect of the attack side of the ball. He's just in front of the midfield line right now. Maybe they go up top to him after they kill some time off the clock, and he dodges from straight away. He seems signaling for the ball here to have Palum kind of floated over the top of the defense. Now back towards the end zone of this big CNS football field. Work it back towards midfield. Palum coming in hot, trying to find a lane to drive, or rather that's Lance Madonna. Madonna turning around, trying to take that shot down the middle, and a second chance opportunity. That one goes right into the stick of the CNS goalie. Ready, ready and Johnny on the spot, no doubt, to bring that shot in. Kraus didn't quite hide the ball enough on that la last shot, left the stick head completely exposed right in the sight of Bartolo, which led to an easy save right at eye level. Yeah, Bartolo doing a great job of saving that one as we're going to get a timeout here. I believe that was an ESM timeout that was called. Three minutes left until the end of this one. It's a three-goal game. And now, CNS, it, we, we say this a lot in lacrosse, you know, it, the game is never over because you could always find your way into a situation where you make a shot, you win a face-off, you make a shot, you win a face-off. And for a team like CNS, that's wholly possible because you've got a guy like Joel Firth going out there to midfield every single time that you score. Not a bad situation to be in because he can win face-offs. Yeah, the face-off part, I guess rather easy. The hard part right now is going to be scoring a goal. This was a 6-6 six to six game coming into halftime. Now it's 11-8 in favor of the Spartans. Only two goals for the North Stars in the entire second half with only three minutes left to play. That's kind of what we expected heading into this one with a team like ESM and how powerful they are offensively. And as, we just, as have, we've seen it tonight defensively as well. Guys like Michael Cox and Robert Wolf the fourth, they've been outstanding on the defensive side of the ball. That they have. And, you know, for CNS right now, we're in a situation where they're down by three. They have a chance to upset. ESM. You know, we, we talk about this in an even playing field, but ESM has a better track record over recent history than CNS does. They're in a situation right now, the North Stars are, where they can make a statement in Section 3 boys lacrosse. And so in a situation like this, you would expect them to go to their senior leadership. So I would not be surprised, and you can tell me what you think, Jacob, for them to give it to Justin Griffith and let him go to work. I would love to see Justin Griffith get the ball. The talented player he is on the attack, he doesn't have a goal today. I know. I which know. is just astonishing to think of. This is a guy with 13 goals and 15 assists a year ago. Back in 2017, he had 19 goals and 20 assists. 
when he was a sophomore. This is a guy who's got the track record. He's got the numbers on the back of the card to prove it. You'd like to see him get the ball a little bit more down the stretch here and see if he can do something, maybe coming in from the top or give him an opportunity to come from behind cage. Yeah, major credit today to the ESM defense to be able to hold up a guy like Justin Griffith because Griffith last year on that first team all-star list by Syracuse.com and you know that when a guy makes it on that list he is for real so ESM doing a great job of capping Justin Griffith today as the Spartans will try and eat this clock 250 to go until the end of this game and at some point CNS is gonna have to start getting aggressive Ball comes loose for a moment. This could be the North Star's opportunity fighting hard for it. It's Michael Cavanaugh for ESM running into several men at midfield, falling down. CNS again trying to get the ball back. It pops loose, picking it up is Cavanaugh, but we get a stoppage. ESM was going to have the ball because Michael Cavanaugh came over, scooped it up, but now we get a timeout call. Looks like Jack Mehandra was able to get the timeout call early, earlier enough when his guy had the possession. Wow, my goodness. That is an incredible job by, by Jack Mehandra. And I don't mean to cut you off, Jacob, but it, we saw in that situation the ball was being bobbled around like no one's business. Michael Cavanaugh came over, came over, picked up the ball, had it cradled in his stick, and somehow Jack McAndrew was able to get that timeout off at maybe a moment where CNS had possession, but I don't know if CNS really did have a moment of possession. Yeah, I think it was a bit it of a delayed <laughs> call given by the officials. I guess that's the perk of you know being at your home field, having the scrum going on right in front of your home bench. Oh, it's like boxing now, right? Yeah, Is maybe. your home field, you got that major home field advantage, the judges know, you, on your side? You can hear him a little bit better calling the timeout, and I think he, you could see on the field he was signaling for a timeout there. I just don't think the official got up to him quite in time and took – few more seconds off the clock before he granted him the timeout. Well, certainly is a race to the finish line here at CNS. We want to once again thank all of you for tuning in here tonight on CMY Stream. And it has been a fun time, no doubt. And no matter who wins, we really do appreciate your viewership, whether you're a fan of the Spartans or you're a fan of the North Stars. 2.30 to go until the final buzzer here at CNS. And the North Stars will come out of this break with the ball. Want to remind everybody that we will be back on Monday as the Spartans take on Jamesville DeWitt down in East Syracuse. That game begins at 6.30 p.m. on Monday. Be sure to tune in, cnystream.com. Far side they go. The North Stars looking for a long shot cradled by Lemelbaum. A nice save coming up in the clutch. Lemelbaum doing a great job there to prevent CNS from getting another score on the board and kind of prevent that comeback because they may be running out of time, folks. Now we'll see how long the Spartans can eat this clock. But now I think we're going to get a call against ESM, and we are. Now, do we get an offsides? I didn't see the signal by the referee. I think that was indeed an offsides call. And so the ball turns over to CNS. The North Stars are going to have to move very quickly here with just 100 seconds left in this game, down three. Oh, and now we have a delayed penalty on the Spartans. 133 to go in this game. If CNS can, can score here, that can be huge. So the ball comes loose, and now we will see that penalty in force. ESM has really racked up its uh, penalties, and... It's given that man down you did a lot of lot of practice today. I think we're getting a push and we'll have a man up opportunity for, for CNS. So the the call goes against Gavin Ho, Ho was it against Hodling? I, think I it believe was so. Hodling. Yeah, so Hodling will will step out. It'll be a six on five opportunity. Top of the perimeter and out of the far side. And CNS needs to make something happen here. 118 to go in this game. They're down by three. The North Stars working to the top. Taking that long shot past Lemonbaum. Headed out of bounds and chasing the shot. They will get the ball back. But again, time is of the essence. Coming up on that one minute mark. No time to waste now. Long shot and he scores. 
How about that? CNS able to get the ball into the net. It's Joel Firth doing it all for the North Stars tonight, 11-9. Big shot there as we were approaching desperation time for CNS at this point. They may just have to start even shots at the goalkeeper. It's a two-goal game. There's still a chance if Firth can continue his hot entirety of a game at the faceoff X. You still have a chance, but you're going to have to score quickly. You're still down two. But if I'm CNS and head coach Jack McAndrew, it's give Joel Firth the ball, go do your thing now. Now, well, ESM won the face off here, and they're not going to hold back. Bringing it the other way, the ball comes loose. Someone's got to get a ground ball, and for the North Star's sake, CNS is begging for one here. Now I think we're going to get a timeout. Timeout called by ESM. They get the ball, and now under a minute to go, 52 seconds. It's 11-9 to nine in favor of the Spartans. And I think at this point, we're going to see a lot of hacking and slashing by CNS. Yeah, this may be the point of the game where you give the ball to the fastest guy on the field and just kind of tell him to run in a circle, take a lap or two around cage. There's 52 seconds left to go. The only way the ball can go back to CNS is off a turnover. Yeah, that's so the you, only way. So you might see just one or two passes get the ball into the hands of a guy. Maybe it is Hodel, Hodeling, who's got probably the best stick skills on the team. He hasn't turned the ball over very much today and just kind of have him run around and try and evade the defense, kill these last 52 seconds, and walk away with your second victory of the year. And another guy that's got great stick skills on this East Syracuse Manoa team is Timothy Krause. We've seen him with a lot of prolific offense today, but he is really good when it comes to stick skills. You see a guy go in in front of the net and make a shot the way he has today. We've seen him do it a num number of times. He's able to drive in, hold on to the ball in quick motion. That's how you know a guy knows how to cradle the ball in lacrosse. So we may see Timothy Krause come up along with Gavin Hodling tonight, the end of this game, potentially eat the rest of this clock for ESM. Hey, like well, to once again, oh, go ahead, Jacob, I'm sorry. I, I like those two choices, and but you could also very well see Lance Madonna. Lance oh, Madonna's been the show, five goals on the day, kind of let your uh, top guy run the clock out. But I see more of a trying to not pass the ball too many times because that leaves wide open opportunities for a pass to be intercepted and taken down the field for another goal. I want to remind everybody that we've got another great matchup coming up. It'll be a battle of Jamesville, DeWitt, and East Syracuse, Manoa, two bordering communities on Monday. Be sure to stick around for that one. Maybe not stick around. You don't want to spend all weekend on our inactive feed here on CMYStream.com, but make sure that you find your way back at 6.30 on Monday. Racing around now, the Spartans just trying to kill the clock. 35 seconds left until the end of this one. Back into the corner, the Spartans have got to do something to get out of there. CNS able to pick up the ball, goes out of bounds. They chased it, though, and not sure what the call is. Waiting to find out who's going to get the ball. Well, just 28 seconds left. Not sure if it's going to matter who's left with the ball here. Oh, so we're going to get a slashing call in the corner. The flag actually never came out, but they do call the slash. I, I There is a flag. Oh, okay, so the flag did come out. All right, maybe I'm just uh, visually not up to snuff right now. 28 seconds left in this game. And we just saw another flag come out. No, I think that Or are they just tossing it off the toss, field? They're tossing <laughs> it back to the official there common courtesy of many defenders in lacrosse. All right, common courtesy to everybody except for me who didn't see the non-official individual throw the flag as we see a stumbling ESM Spartan down to the near side. That was Lance Madonna, and now Madonna is charged with the task of holding on to this ball. 17 seconds left in the game. Madonna is thrown to the ground almost and holds on to the ball, gets it back to the top. There would be another penalty, but it looks like uh, Hodling's just going to be able to kill the clock here. Yes, he is. No true man-up opportunity for ESM. Final score tonight, ESM 11, CNS 9. A huge victory for the Spartans as they come into Cicero and they down the North Stars, sending them into the ground, and ESN sends themselves to 2-0 and oh on the season. Jacob, it really was a tremendous performance tonight for a number of guys on this ESM team. You cannot talk about this evening's game without mentioning again and again Lance Madonna, Gavin Hodling, and I'd even throw Timothy Krause in there at this point. I mean, that that's the dynamic trio for this team. It was in game one, and it was tonight. They were responsible for the entirety of the offense for the Spartans. Lance Madonna, five goals. He's got nine on the season. 
Gavin Hodling, three goals. That puts him up to seven on the year. And Timothy Krause with his second straight hat trick. All of them came in the second half today. So those three were just dynamic on offense, getting wide open looks. And they're even hitting the difficult shots too. They're just three very skilled guys, especially at the high school level. And you expect to see high levels of production from that trio all year long as ESM tries to repeat as Class B section champs. And we saw CNS tonight put up a valiant effort against a very talented ESM team. And one thing to consider for CNS is that they're looking for a star to fix it on. Tonight, Justin Griffith really did not appear for the North Stars in the way that you would have expected him to. We saw last year that they had a number one star that they could always rely on. That was Nate Scarlatta. He was a first team all-star at Syracuse.com last year's list. And now he's graduated and gone off to Binghamton. So he's about an hour south of here. And that doesn't help. That does not help the North Stars tonight. They could have used a performance like Nate Scarlatta's tonight. Instead, not much going. Yeah, they're going to need to kind of build upon this performance. There were some bright spots. You stayed in this game. You only lost by two to East Syracuse Manoa, who was heavily favored coming in tonight, into tonight. One guy I want to look at is junior Joshua Picard. He's, it's his fourth year on the team, and he's only a junior, which is outstanding to begin with. He had two goals today. You look for him to kind of step up and take the reins offensively a little bit. And then we said his name all night, Joel Firth. Four goals today, fantastic at faceoff X. And when you have his production, if he can do that against the rest of the teams that aren't quite as skilled defensively, you think this is a CNS team that with the amount of possessions they're going to get will score 12, 13, maybe even 14 goals a game, which is going to be very hard to take them down if they can do that. Well, CNS loses their first game of the season. They fall to 0-1. ESM rises to 2-0, and they will try and make it 3-0 on Monday against Jamesville DeWitt. We know that the Red Rams are very talented in their own right. ESM, we saw tonight, they've got a number of stars. So it will be a battle of two juggernauts on Monday, and you're going to find that game right here at comystream.com. 6.30 p.m. on Monday is the time to log on to comystream.com and tune in to what will be a really fun battle between between two very talented Central New York boys lacrosse teams. But until then, I am Julian Barron alongside Jacob Kronberg for our fantastic CNY stream staff, including Ryan Clark and Will Shea to my left. We want to thank you so much for tuning in to the inaugural broadcast of the CNY stream lacrosse showcase series and the first ever video broadcast in the history of our very short history of CNY stream. It has been a pleasure to bring this one to you. We will see you next time right here on CNY Stream from Cicero. We're signing off. We'll see you on Monday at 6.30 at cnystream.com.